Hey, what's up everyone? It's Nick with Nick's Garage Builds. Um, I wanna go over forks. A lot of you guys have asked me on the side how I got the forks to fit. I know there's a lot of videos out there on how to do it. I'll take you through how I did it. These are going to be made for another guy in our crew who wants to run a little bit bigger of a bike. Not quite as this big. This is uh, 735 millimeters from the bolt to the top. This will be 630 millimeters from this bolt to the top. I don't buy anything else other than what came with this. I modify the bolt that came with it. So everything can go on the bike. The only thing you will have to buy is another bolt. I'll add the links in the video description in case any of you are interested. And let's get started on this. If this seems like too much work, head to the Ride or Die webpage that I'll post in the description link. They have ready forks that you can buy the entire kit. They have bushing kits that adapt to many of the 630 millimeter forks, like the ones I bought. So feel free to buy just the bushings or the entire fork assembly. All right, so this is the bolt that came with this kit. If you look, it's gonna go in from the bottom like that, and it's gonna go all the way to the top. As you can see, this back part will get pressed in, and then the front will protrude to the top. We need to mark this and then cut it. So we can use this bottom piece, and then we want to use just this top piece with the threads, just a little bit of it. Um, as you can see on my bike, I still use the decorative nut, and that's how I torque my top clamp on. So we'll start with measuring this, which these are the fly pig forks, and it's looking like it's We'll just call it 26 millimeters. We're just gonna set it on the bolt and we'll mark it. So that's roughly 26 millimeters. We'll cut it there because um, I'm gonna turn mine on the lathe to make a nice flat surface. All right guys, for this step, all you're gonna need is this uh, trusty cut through anything saw, uh, maybe a live battery in the background and a vise. And we're just gonna cut where we made a mark. I feel like this blade was about as sharp as a butter knife. All right guys, bolt is cut on the bottom. Uh, you can see we got a little shoulder right here and that will sit in this shoulder right in there. We will put this through so we can get our stops. And that's as far as that's gonna go in. So. You don't have to be super precision with this. We're just gonna mark the end of it here. And then I leave approximately 10 millimeters on the top. Cause like I said, I use that, I use that decorative nut to torque it down. So you can see my mark right there and then that'll torque that top plate down so we'll make two more cuts now all right everyone i decided to put a new blade on this so this isn't a six minute video on how to cut metal with a dull blade so let's finish these last two cuts all right i got my two pieces that were just cut that one's really hot i'm gonna put him down uh you can look from my cuts that it is certainly not a flat surface. If you want to do it this way, I'd recommend bring it to a machinist. Uh, if you know someone or a local machinist and see if they can finish up these next steps for you. If you guys are interested, I will make drawings or a CAD file for these if you want. Uh, but I'll take you through what I do with these to face them. For the next step, all you really need is this 1956 uh, Sears imported Atlas. Yeah, it's a beast. For the second one, we're just gonna face this side, face this side. Luckily, we have nice surface to grab on both ends. Uh, and then drill a hole through the middle of it, 12 millimeter again. Nice cut. 
cup. Uh, I, I shaved down a little bit of the bolt so that it fits in there a little bit better and I'll show you that. Okay. Ooh. Snug. It'll fit that far in there. So that much is sticking up. Here's my decorative nut. So you can see there's a lot of room inside of there. It's pretty deep. And I should have all the threads available. Both bushings are made. I took the lower one in and I pressed it into the lower triple tree. As you can see, it's flush on the bottom. The top is just sitting below it. Um, that's okay if it's below it just a little bit because your bushing that we're gonna put in will sit on top of this and there's enough clearance that this won't hit your stem. The top uh, triple tree, we have the bushing just mild. You can tap it in with a hammer, press it. Your bolt's gonna compress that in there anyway. And then we have our thread sticking out. I like to take the decorative nut and spin all the way down and verify that it goes down all the way and hits your top triple tree clamp. And it does. Uh, I like the 12 millimeter bolt versus a 10 millimeter bolt. It's just a lot bigger, it's beefier. It just makes me feel safer considering these things are kind of put together pretty wonky anyway. But, uh, and these are bushings to replace what's in the razor. The razor comes with a 10 millimeter ID and the 15 millimeter OD. This is a, the 12 millimeter ID and 15 millimeter OD, which I will link in the description as well. You can see it's nice and tight. Last, that might be kind of difficult is this is a decorative nut that came with it. It's pretty large in size. Unfortunately, you have to have a 30 millimeter socket. You don't need to buy this big honking expensive snap on one. I'm sure Harbor Freight will do just fine for this. Now we're gonna install the forks onto the stem. In the middle of your top bearing and your lower bearing, there's a tube and it also has a 15 millimeter ID. If you're gonna put this bushing in, sometimes, see like it's not all the way down, it's sitting a little bit flush. Sometimes you have to, I just take the 12 millimeter bolt and kind of move that tube around a little bit until your bushing finds center. And now it's sitting nice and flat. Same thing for the bottom one. Uh, and actually that tube's a little bit tight. It should keep this bushing right in there. Bushing's flush and it's in there and it's gonna stay in there, which helps a ton with installing these forks. Now remember, if you guys have all these accessories, this is the best time to put them through there so you don't have to try to route in between these tight spots. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. So we're just putting on this top, my long bolt, and we're gonna go in there all the way down to the bottom. Now this doesn't have to be anything yet. Like I said, when we tighten this bolt in the center, I have this lower clamp already tight. It's gonna kind of suck everything up. I'd recommend definitely putting on a little blue Loctite on the bottom of that bolt, just for safety. I actually torque these and I like to go to 35 Newton meters on that. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. The nut on the bottom is a lock nut and we use blue Loctite. And all we're doing is compressing those bearings, but there's a tube between them. So it should compress pretty quickly. Here, we'll try to make it green. There we go. This top triple clamp is technically still floating because the bushing compresses from the bottom. So that's why we still use our decorative nut. 
and we are going to put that on next and we'll torque that and I go pretty high I like to go to 90 to 100 newton meters makes me feel safe I'll just go to 90 okay now your fork should be fully onto your bike and secure Give them a good twirl, make sure everything's loose and it feels nice, like this is buttery smooth. So this is as good as it's gonna get. Now remember that we still have to tighten these side bolts because we loosened up to this, because this clamp was free floating. Don't go crazy on these, they will break. And they're fully tight and ready to go. The fender comes, it's a CR50 fender. None of this is cut out. Um, one was a mistake by me. I'll admit that wholeheartedly. Uh, the second hole is what the one I needed, but you have to drill a one inch hole to clear the nut on the bottom of your stem. And then, I don't know, I don't think the stock razor ones will work anymore because they're small bolts. Uh, I just get, three 16 millimeter long M6 bolts. Um, and then that will bolt this up to this new clamp. But I still do use the stock razor bracket thing, which is pretty cool. This hole was part of a CRF 50, so it's just gonna be, the, is what it is. Uh, this is a 14 inch motocross wheel, just so you guys get a look of the difference in size it's not crazy bigger. It's a 6100-14. It did not come with this brake. This is a 190 millimeter brake. Uh, Amazon suggested it. Once again, I'll link it. It bolts right up to this wheel that uh, we ran on this. I think it's a 76 millimeter hub bore, but uh, once again, I'll link that so you don't have to think about it. We are going to use the stock Razor 12 millimeter axle bolt. Couple things that are goofy. Uh, we don't use the razor bushings. They're too wide because this wheel is a little bit fatter. So we use their 16 millimeter bushings, um, obviously with a 12 millimeter ID for the bolt. And for some reason, I always have to run one washer on the right side or left side where the brake is. And we'll go through that right after this. We're gonna put this bushing in there with the washer on one side. One side's in. We're gonna take our bushing, kind of squeeze it in there. The bolt barely comes out on the other side for the nut. If you wanna go with a longer bolt, you can. I just put Loctite on it and put it on. Remember, blue Loctite for all this. Red Loctite, it's too tight. Red Loctite, no good. Blue Loctite, great. Done. Rolls nice. This brake is what was suggested with the wheel. The issue being, it came with these spacers on there. You can see there's four dots on each one. You have to break these spacers off. Otherwise, it won't fit between the wheel and the brake rotor. I don't know why that is. It was just an Amazon thing. They break pretty easy, literally a hammer. I put them in a vise and just push on the brake caliper and they snap off pretty easy. It's just lightly tacked. So you'll have to get some M8 bolts. I'll put them in the link. And they're 25 millimeters long. So an M8 by 1.25 by 25 millimeters long. It's super important that you get the length right, otherwise it'll hit the rotor. Also, I had less drag in the brake pads and I put one washer between the brake caliper and this uh, steering tube. Slide that washer in there. Perfect. Same on the bottom. I tighten one, not super tight, just enough to keep the washer on the top there. 
and then I remove it. And since it's a brake, I do a little bit of Loctite. Snug. And I go back to the bottom one that I just tightened. Remove it. A little dab will do you. Spin it, make sure nothing's hitting. Give her a quick little squeeze. Stops like a champ. Bam. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope you get some ideas of how to do this yourself. Maybe you can follow this directly. Maybe you don't need a lathe. Maybe you can just do it with a grinder, and that's great. This is a finished product. It's got a pretty goofy stance right now. You can see we got this beautiful 14, and we have this cute little 10. Uh, tune back in as I'm going to extend his swing arm using this Cobra 50 something swing arm, and we're gonna make a whole new swing arm so he can put a 12 in the rear to run the standard pit bike 1412. So thank you everyone.